Hi everybody, it's June 12, 2018. I am at the Economic Collapse, Michael Schneider's blog. The big secret the mainstream media doesn't want to tell you about. America's soaring suicide rates. Have you heard these rates? They sure have soared. From 1999, 30% increase, and I believe the number is over 45,000 killed themselves every year. 123 Americans commit suicide every single day. Now suicide has become the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, but among Americans between the ages of 10, 10, and 34, it is now the second leading cause of death. So this article started with Kate Spade and Anthony Bodine. Kate Spade, I guess, made handbag, handbag designs. She had taken the fashion world by storm, supposedly living the kind of lifestyle that millions of Americans can only dream about. Anthony Bourdain, well, had a similar life that Americans could only dream about, and they both killed themselves. So Michael Schneider is asking, why? Why do people that seemingly have everything going for them decide to kill themselves? Well, he goes into one reason. I'm going to bring you to two reasons. But one, one that rarely gets talked about is the destruction of family the living in the country of the lie, the loss of connection, trust. I posted a video, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago about loneliness in Western countries and how many people, that too, loneliness exploding. Why? Because people can't connect. They can't have meaningful conversation with one another. And when people are in need of help and don't have anyone they can go to, that causes a hopelessness. These are factors that don't really get talked about. The destruction of our social relationships, how we relate to one another now, especially since the birth of the internet. Well, let's just talk about Michael Schneider's reason, but here are some more statistics. Among Americans between the ages of 10 and 34, and I did want to read that again, 10, it, it's now the second leading cause of death. No, it wasn't always this way. So, suicide rates in the United States have risen nearly 30% since 1999, and it's not a trend affecting any one particular demographic group. Virtually all ages are seeing major increases. Hospital ho hospitalizations for suicidal thoughts and attempts at children's hospitals approximately doubled over a recent seven-year period. Children's hospitals across the country, hospitalizations, hospitalizations, why can't I say that word, uh, for suicidal thoughts and attempts doubled from 2008 to 2015. The highest increase was seen among teenagers 15 to 17 years of age. That That is very sad. Middle-aged Americans are also seeing a stunning rise in suicides. The age of 45 to the age of 64 is rising faster than for the general population as a whole. Suicide, uh, suicides among middle-aged men and women climbed at a higher rate than the overall population. Okay, well, 
how can we be having a population explosion? All right, not getting sidetracked. Uh, suicide among men aged 45 to 64 increased 43% in a five-year period, 99 through 2014. And the uptick was even greater among women in that age group. So why is this happening? Well, history tells us that suicide rates tend to go up during economic recessions, but we're not in a recession. Let me just say that our country continues to be a country that is in decline in every area. That includes the economy. So you can listen to Trump and his administration. You can listen to mainstream media reporters talk about how the economy has just, well, Trump, man, what is it, 3.9% unemployment? Please, Trump supporters, you were angry at the Obama supporters for believing the horseshit coming out of his administration. The same horseshit is coming out of the Trump administration. We have 103 million Americans without a job, and they literally don't matter in the figures, the numbers. That's a third of our population. Anyway, researchers have found that people that kill themselves tend to have certain things in common. 42% have relationship problems. 28% substance abuse issues. 16% job or financial problems. 29% some kind of crisis, I guess a different kind of crisis than the crises that are mentioned here. 22% physical health issue, 9% criminal legal problem. Those problems have all always existed. So to find the truth, we need to go down the rabbit hole, and it's a rabbit hole that the mainstream media doesn't want to talk about the use of antidepressants and mind-altering drugs, psychiatric medications exploding in our society. It has been exploding since 1987. And interesting, the more doctors, psychiatrists write out prescriptions for their patients, well, mental illness has also exploded. The side effects of these psychiatric medications People experience side effects, they're told, sorry, it's not a side effect. You have another psychiatric disorder, so let me write you out a prescription for that disorder. And then they have more side effects. Oh, it is simply fabulous. The, and this is unbelievable, the use of antidepressants rose almost 65% in a five-year period between 1999 and 2014. A new report, listen to this, the National Center for Health Statistics, a new report, the most recent data available is from 2011 through 2014. They don't have the data for 2015, 2016, 2017. When we are now, well, a society Everything's digital, data very easy to collect. That doesn't sound quite right to me, considering that psychiatrists, doctors, all using computers, everybody who goes into a pharmacy to fill a prescription, all of that data is collected and stored. So I would think that it would be very easy to get the data for 2015, 2016, 17. But that's an aside. So from 2011 through 2014, the most recent data available, close to 13% of people 12 and older said they took an antidepressant. Said is the National Center for Health Statistics 
doing surveys? Is that the data? They're getting surveys? They're just asking questions? All right, that number is up from 11% in 2005, 2008. The most recent numbers have increased by nearly 65% since 1999 through 2002 when 7.7% of Americans reported taking an antidepressant. Yes, numerous scientific studies have shown that there appears to be a link between antidepressant use and suicide. It's not just antidepressants. Psychiatric medications, antipsychotics, antidepressants, it's known. These things increase suicidal ideation they can inject, induce suicidal ideation in people that have never had any kind of suicidal ideation, as well as homicidal ideation. The biggest review of clinical trials ever conducted found that the use of antidepressants doubled the risk of suicide for those under the age of 18. Why they always do that thing under the age of 18. The black box warnings that pharmaceutical companies had to put on their antidepressants about suicide and suicidal um, ideation. It was for under the age of 18. So does that suggest it doesn't happen to people over 18? It does. Pharmaceutical companies fail to report side effects and even deaths linked to the drugs. That's well-known, well-established. Even before Prozac hit the market in 1987, was it Eli Lilly that was the company, the Prozac company? I believe so. They hid. They hid that data. Those, they included in their experiments, those who killed themselves, those who had suicidal ideation, they scrubbed that from the studies that they submitted to the FDA. Um, an analysis of 70 trials of the most common antidepressants involving more than 18,000 people found they doubled the risk of suicide and aggressive behavior in under 18s. It does it for everyone. So if you have ever been on these drugs, then you already know that they can really mess with your mind and they can result in people doing some very irrational things. Yeah, because these drugs are mind altering. And many people think that they're just fabulous on them. But like Peter Bregan, psychiatrist, the psychiatrist who was most outspoken about psychiatric medications, he, writing pa papers on spellbinding, what these psychiatric medications do to your brain is what alcohol can do to somebody's brain. The alcoholic may think they're the life of the party, and everybody's just trying to get away from them. Psychiatric medications, you think you're absolutely fine, but your mind has been altered and your reality has been altered, and you are not capable of assessing your own behavior clearly. So, Kate Spade was taking medications for depression and anxiety. And these medications, they claim cure mental illness. So why are so many people killing themselves while they're being treated by a psychiatrist taking psychiatric medications? That doesn't seem quite right. Bourdain, nobody knows if he was on medications but he spoke about depression. So mainstream media 
They're never going to address this because they get an awful lot of money from pharmaceutical companies. And yeah, haven't you seen the commercials? Oh, whatever medication. And I have seen recent commercials. I go to visit this elderly neighbor of mine, and she has the TV on all the time. And commercials come up for medications, and I can't remember what the medications were for, but the list of side effects, which is never a an extensive or comprehensive list, they just report a few, but some of those <laughs> reportings, even death, I heard this commercial for medication. They said, even death. And I looked at my neighbor and I said, so even death. And Americans are going to go ask their doctors about this medication, hearing that it could cause death. And she looked at me and she said, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Even death. Okay. What are the other... What is the other radical change that has um, come about, let's say, in the last 20 years? Microwave radiation, Wi-Fi, all of these wireless gadgets, and extremely low frequencies, which I have been showing you in videos the extremely low frequencies that make their signature in precipitation on radar. It induces depression. Oh, it induces. It doesn't may induce. It induces. Because, and I say because, because it, it's not a may. There are so many studies that our U.S. Army and our Navy have done, as well as the Russians, on extremely low frequencies. The psychiatric symptoms associated with exposure to non-ionizing electromagnetic radiation from mobile telephones, and you see everybody on their mobile telephones, and well, one of the reasons why people kill themselves was due to those physical uh, med medical issues, Wi-Fi, cell phone, cell phones, um, Wi-Fi in your home, smart meters, can worsen pre-existing conditions even if it didn't cause them. So you have a whole lot of Americans with chronic medical issues that they can't seem to cure. They can't seem to get themselves better. They worsen or they're in a chronic state. And when you are in a chronic physical uh, condition that is not pleasant to experience day after day after day after day, month after month, year after year, people get worn down. Microwave frequent... Uh, Microwave frequency electromagnetic fields produce widespread neuropsychiatric effects, including depression. What is this? This is the reported biological phenomena, the effects, and clinical manifestations attributed to microwave and radio frequency radiation, a study conducted by our Naval Medical Research Institute collected all of the effects, funded the studies, collected the data to find out a comprehensive list of biological effects, and it's extraordinary. Our Navy, our Army, our government, they know exactly what they are doing to us as we are saturated in an environment with these microwave frequencies. Never before has this ever occurred. So, it's the 
frequencies coming from smart meters and the Wi-Fi in your home and the Wi-Fi in your office and the Wi-Fi at the stores that you shop at and the Wi-Fi in public schools where your children go to attend and the cell towers that are on the school property and the cell towers that are outside across the street and all of the antennas that are going up and the Wi-Fi in your neighbor's apartment, all of the gadgets, the frequencies coming from computer screens and TV screens, and wow, our environment has changed. Could it be one of the reasons why we are seeing an explosion of disease, illness, syndromes, chronic pain? Yeah, it is. So. I really recommend that you take a look at this heating of organs. Oh God, I can't I can't go through the list. Psychological disorders, depression. Just want to mention sleeplessness, insomnia when you have chronic insomnia because these microwave frequencies deplete the melatonin in your brain and many people now experiencing chronic insomnia well there's a reason why they use sleep deprivation as torture that alone causes disturbance depression a whole lot of mental fatigue mental problems biological effects of electromagnetic radiation and what do we have here let's just do it quickly ah, depression central nervous system depression microwave radiation central nervous system research on the effects of radio waves and microwaves well it was widespread those effects on the subjects that they included in their studies. And this is Barry Trower's declaration, amended declaration. He was the, and Barry Trower, if you don't know who he is, he's a former Royal Navy man, specialized in microwave warfare. He was an expert called to testify in a case in Oregon uh, parents were the plaintiff, defendant, Portland Public Schools, who have to file lawsuits to get Wi-Fi out of your schools. Wi-Fi, extremely dangerous, especially for children, because their skulls are softer than adult skulls, so the frequencies more easily penetrate the brain, the skull, crossing the blood-brain barrier. What did Barry Trower say? The United States Defense Intelligence Agency warned all of its personnel of low-level microwave effects, depression, suicidal tendencies. And I'm focusing on depression and suicidal tendencies but cancer, leukemia, here, a plethora, plethora of extensive, well-researched documents from around the world highlighting impairments and illnesses caused by microwave radiation. What are some of those effects? Well, depression, suicidal tendencies. I'll read these then. Arrhythmia, heart attack, cell death, diseases of the blood, interference to bone marrow, brain tumors, DNA damage, altered calcium level in cells, reduction in nighttime melatonin, suppression of the immune system, arthritis, rheumatism, skin problems, lymphatic diseases, vaginal discharge, vascular system disease, tinnitus, leukemia, childhood cancer, sleep problems, mental problems, 
depression, irritability, memory loss, and difficulty in concentrating, headache, diseases, fatigue, suicidal tendencies, miscarriage, infertility, and when you have all of these effects and they become chronic, well, then that person who is experiencing the chronic conditions begin to experience problems within their relationships. Those who don't want to hear it and when they need care and compassion it seems because I've heard from a lot of you that care and compassion is not there. So when you have these chronic conditions and you don't have any connection real deep meaningful connection from the people who supposedly love you and that care and compassion is absent that can create an awful lot of depression it can also create in that individual I've got to pretend I'm okay. I've got to pretend I'm okay. I've got to pretend I'm okay day after day after day. And that creates an awful lot of stress and they become worse. Yeah. That suicide is exploding. Is it really a surprise?